everybody, welcome back to Maya Monday. So this week I'm going to be talking to you about particles inside of Maya and how we can use some expressions and some per particle arrays to do some pretty cool things. And this I, I think is a it's a pretty basic example, but it really illustrates the power of the particle system inside of Maya. And, and once you get your head around working with the expressions, you know it's an endless world that you can you can do amazing amazing things with the particles in Maya. So let me uh, let me go ahead and show you what we're going to get to at the end result. What I've got here is I've got a little setup that allows me to have the particle color be derived by the collision of the object that it's hitting. So depending on whatever object it hits, it's going to get its color um, based on that. So if we come down here, obviously, you know, if it hits the object that's got O2 in it, it's going to be blue. If it hits the red object, obviously the, those guys are going to be red. And then if it hits the uh, the green object, they're going to be green. So all of this is done with a couple per particle attributes that were added to my particle system and a, a couple little simple expressions inside of Maya. So let's go ahead and look at how I got to this effect. We'll just go back to the starting point of this file and I'll build it up for you and explain what's going on here. So what we're going to do first is we're going to create a new particle system. So we'll say in particle, create an emitter, and we'll just translate that guy kind of up here. And if we play this back, let's rewind that guy. We've just got some basic points kind of coming in our scene. So the first thing I'm going to do is just jump in here to these particles and make them have a different render type of spheres so they're a little bit bigger. So the next thing you're going to notice is if we put this object um, sort of in the path of those particles and hit play, obviously there's no collision happening. So the first thing we want to do is we want to add collision objects onto these three pieces of geometry. So we'll go ahead and we'll take our first piece of geometry which is going to be zero and we're going to say mesh create a passive collider. Then we're going to do the same thing on our second object. So we're going to say mesh again, create a passive collider. And then I'm going to grab the third one and I'm just going to middle mouse button click on end mesh menu. And that basically repeats the last function in that drop down that we did on Windows um, only, not on Windows, or it doesn't work on Linux or on, on um, OS X. But that little middle mouse button trick I use all the time when I am working on Windows. So now if we play this back, what do we have? Well, we've got some particles coming down and colliding with some geometry. So the next thing we need to do is get this color stuff happening. And we're going to be using a couple of per particle attributes to do that. And uh, per particle attributes are basically attributes that can be unique um, on each individual particle. So we'll bring up the attribute editor and we'll jump down to our per particle attribute section, these arrays right here. And the first thing that we want to do is we need to add a new array that's you know it doesn't out of the box it has a few of them in here but it doesn't have the full list of of them it would be really really long so it allows you to sort of build up and customize that that per particle array list with the things you need so the first thing we need to do is get a color per particle array so we're going to go ahead and hit color and I'm going to say add this per particle attribute on there so now you can see I've got this guy so that's going to allow me to have an expression tied into that RGBPP and have that expression drive each particle's color individually. The next thing we want to do is we want to add an attribute in here that actually runs a ticker on when an object collides with a given piece of geometry and it will know which piece of geometry it's, it's collided with. So we'll go ahead and we'll go into the particle tab and I'm going to grab this collision geometry index. So if it collides with my first rigid body, it has an index of zero. If it collides with my second rigid body, it has an index of one. And then obviously my third rigid body will have an index of two. If I had a, a fourth, it would be three and so on. So every time a particle comes in collision state, it basically, this little, this collision geometry index is going to send out information say, hey, I just collided with this guy. I'm this particle ID number and my collision index is two, one, whatever. We want to grab that information and use that to drive color. So we're, we're going to do that now. So we'll go ahead and we'll add that guy in there so you can now see in my list I've got this geometry uh, collision index and we're just going to make a new expression on this. So for this expression I'm just going to copy this guy. Just We're going to basically um, take this information that this, this counter is kind of spinning out and record it to a custom variable. So we're just going to say dollar sign and whatever you want to call it, I just call it, well, we got to tell it it's an integer first. And I'm going to say dollar sign i for whatever. You can make it whatever you want. And I'm going to make that equal to, you know, this, this in particle collision um, index. So every time a particle collides, it's basically going to, it's going to record its collision state. Zero, one, two, three, or I'm not in collision state. So once we get that integer um, value going, we just need to do a simple if. We, first thing we want to do is, find out if it's in a collision state or not. If it is in a collision state, then we want to go through and find, well, what object have you collided with? So the, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and say a simple little if. So we're going to say if, and we're going to evaluate whether it's in collision or not in the first, the first thing. So we're going to say, all right, let's, let's compare our dollar sign 
i for each particle. So that's that's that little uh, object that we just made there, that little that integer that we just made. If it's not equal to, so explanation point equal minus one. You know if if it's not equal to that, then it's true. If it's true, then, well, let's find out what number we're, we are colliding with. So then we're going to go in here and just do our next line, and we'll hit our tab key. So the next thing we're going to do is say, all right, you know, if, if this if this little not equal to evaluates is true, then let's go ahead and, and, and run through our list of possibilities and, and see what it is. So we're going to say, okay, if it is, um, let's go ahead and get this dollar sign i, and let's say if it's equal to 0. Now, it's very important that you have two equal signs here because if you have just a single equal sign you're basically saying dollar sign i is equal to zero and that's we're not trying to set its value to zero we're trying to say are you what 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 value are you at are you equal to zero well if you are equal to zero let's uh let's make you red zero um is going to be my red so we're going to say okay cool then if that happens to be true we're going to make our rgb rule now here's a really cool trick Normally when you're creating expressions inside of Maya, you do the name and then the attribute. So the node dot attribute. Now if it's a local expression, meaning you're writing an expression that's referencing attributes on itself, it's local, it's not querying some other node inside of Maya, you can kind of take a shortcut. It's almost like shorthand. You don't have to put the name of the node dot attribute. You can just put the attribute and it'll, it'll fill it out for you automatically. Um, when you close down the expression editor and reopen it. So it's just a little shorthand. It's it's kind of cool. It makes typing expressions easier. So RGBPP is an attribute on that particle system that we added. You can see it, it right there. That's that custom attribute that we added earlier. Is going to be equal to, and then it's just a vector, right? So this is going to be red, 1, green, 0, blue, 0, and then we close this guy off and finish off our expression. Now I'm just going to copy this right here and paste it in there two more times. So we'll go paste paste and then we're going to make this index one which is going to be green so we're going to switch this from red we'll make the red zero we'll make the green 100 percent and then we're going to go to index two which is going to be blue so we'll make the red zero again and the blue 100 percent and then we can just finish off our expression and go ahead and hit the create button and i'll just expand this out so you can get a sense of what that that is so really simple little expression we're, we're making a variable, we're querying some information, we're storing in that variable, we're running our first um, evaluation, is it equal to, you know, is this true or false? If, it's, if, it, um, if it passes that, then, you know, it's in a collision state, well then what number are you colliding with? If it's zero, if you've collided with zero in your dollar sign um, I that you're holding for that particle, then you're red. If you've, you know, hit uh, one, then you're going to be green. If you've hit two, you're going to be blue. So really, really simple expression. And just like that, we now have you know, particles that kind of come down and do what we would expect. So if you wanted to add more objects to your scene, you would just keep annotating that expression and adding in, you know, more more integer values for the, for the other objects that it's going to collide with. So again, it's truly uh, based on the object that it collides with. When that integer value kind of hits, you know, you get these kind of cool little effects here. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. I really appreciate you taking the time to check out Maya Mondays. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to, uh, to hit me up in the chat window. Cheers, everyone.